Hello internet world, it is another day, another day full of opportunities and it's been a really exciting 24 hours. I've had some awesome products in to test and I'm just really excited to be bringing you those videos very soon on the channel. Now by the time you watch this, because this video is actually uploaded on a Saturday, so assuming you're watching this as soon as it goes online, I hope you're having a fantastic weekend. By now you'll have also had the opportunity to watch my new editing room tour for 2014 and it was an awesome video to actually record and I wanted to do it a little bit different rather than sit the camera on a tripod I wanted to hold the camera and just move around the room more freely and yes I know some of the bits of the video were a little bit shaky but I think it just worked better that way it's just a lot nicer to be able to go closer and further away from products without making it look too cinematic you know, some of, the, some of the videos that I've done before when I've done room tours, the camera's been static and I don't know, I just like the format of just moving around the room more. There's also the extended version of that editing room tour already available online for patrons. I'll leave a link to my Patreon campaign in the video description. So please show your optional support if you can. Now, I wanted to take this opportunity to catch up on what I've done so far today and also a couple of viewer questions. Now, first of all, what have I done today? Well, it's a weekday I'm recording this on, so I've already done a school run, as always, and in fact, it's the last school run before the summer holidays. Now, my kids aren't off school yet, but next week, my son starts his work experience. Really excited for him doing that. He's doing one week with another company, and then the second week with me. So I'm really looking forward to that, showing him exactly what I do. I mean, he knows what I do. He knows I produce videos, and in fact, he produces videos himself. But he doesn't know what goes on behind the scenes. You know, all of the sort of mundane work, the paperwork, the emails, the communications, the social networking. So I'm just really keen to show him how much work goes into producing the videos and planning and all, all the other bits and pieces that go on. So really excited for that. Now, the couple of viewer questions I wanted to cover off for you. The first one is to do with this area here. Now, somebody asked in the comments of a video, I think it was one I published yesterday, or it might have been the day before, why isn't there a monitor on the desk or a screen on this desk anymore? Well, it's purely to do with funds. People have this misconception that I am mega rich. I am not rolling in money. I invest my money wisely. So some of the money that I generate from Geekinoids and other revenue streams, I invest wisely in certain items of equipment. But you'll notice that I don't have every single smartphone that comes out or every single tablet that comes out. And certainly the studio that I'm recording this in has got its problems. There is damp coming in. I haven't got the money to get that damp sorted out yet. It's gonna be quite a big job and I have to direct funds in certain ways, as well as pay for day-to-day -day living. I've got a couple of kids to support. My daughter's soon gonna be going to university, so I'm saving for that. So when I move things around, the screen wasn't replaced here. Now in the editing room, I've got plenty of screens, but this wasn't a priority. So I'm hoping that maybe next month or the month after, I might have enough money put aside to just put a cheaper screen in here. And when I say cheaper, I mean like a standard 1080p screen. I mean, two minds what to buy because something tells me that if I buy that cheaper screen, am I just wasting that money? Because I always believe in putting your money into something that's going to have a sort of a long lifespan or a long use span not something that you're going to then want to upgrade very quickly. And if you saw my video yesterday and I talked about my Herman Miller chair, that's a perfect, perfect example of where I would rather wait and then invest in something that's a bit higher quality, or in the case of the Herman Miller chair, a lot higher quality. Now that leads me nicely on to the second viewer question who has seen the orange chair that I'm sitting in now in many, many videos. And that particular viewer, and I'm really apologetic, I can't remember your name, I think it might have been Alan. I think it was Alan, asked, when am I gonna do a video on the orange chair? Well, indeed, the orange chair did appear in my studio tour quite some time ago, but I'm happy to talk a little bit about it for you now. 
So let's take a closer look. So here we go. This is the famous orange and white chair. Now I will leave a link in the video description to where you can pick one of these up, assuming it is still in stock. And the reason I actually purchased this chair, I'm not gonna lie, is because of the color. Orange is my favorite color, and white is my second favorite color. So I just really love the striking orange color of the upholstery on this. Now the seat area is nice and padded, and it seems like a nice quality material as well. I really do like it. Very, very comfortable, and it's got a nice curve across the front as well. So that works really well for sitting in it for long periods of time. And then the back is made of a mesh material. You can see there's a product just on the floor there. And you can see it actually shows through the back. That's just to demonstrate that this is quite a breathable back. And that's really nice because if you're sitting in it in the summer, you don't get a sweaty back. Now all of this plastic is fairly new, so I don't know how well this is gonna sort of perform with age. Some white plastics go yellow if they're in direct sunlight, but so far, so good with this one. It's still a nice bright white. Now one of the only complaints really that I had with this was I thought that these arm pads were gonna be padded, but they're not even pads. It's just hard, rigid plastic, just raised up a little bit from that main arm area. But the bits that I do like is the fact that if you look at it from the side on profile, we've got some nice lumbar support going on there. Now you can't, can't adjust the lumbar support like you can on the Herman Miller chairs, and it isn't that adjustable in comparison to other chairs as well. But it has got a nice sort of curvature here, so it gives a nice amount of support to the lower part of your back. Now with regards to actual adjustment, there is a lever just here, and you can pull that up and that does the gas lift so you can higher or lower the chair. And then there's another one round on this side and this one just either locks it into an upright position or if you pull this one up like so, then it means that you can actually sort of recline the whole chair back. Now it's not just the chair back that reclines, it's the whole chair including the seating area. But really nice, nice solid cast, there's a nice solid base on this, and I really like it. I think for the price, which was just over £100, this is a good value chair that not only gives a nice amount of support, but also looks great as well. So there you go. I think it's a very, very comfortable chair, and it was just over £100, and I think I've had it almost a year now, and it seems to be lasting okay. It's not really showing any problems with sort of squeaks or anything sort of going wrong with it. When I talked to you yesterday about how much you should spend on a chair, you know, it's hit and miss. Sometimes you could find a real bargain that lasts many, many years. And it also depends how you use the chair as well. If you're always rocking backwards and forwards, you know, or you're banging it into tables and, and things like that, then of course the chair's not gonna last as long. And if you spend eight plus hours in your chair per day, it's going to last less time than if you're just using it for a couple of hours per day. So it really is all relative on how much you use it and how much you're prepared to spend. I think this one, if it lasts me two years or maybe three years, then I'll be happy with the amount I paid in ratio to how long it's lasted. That's what I would be happy with. Uh, and up just, just over £100, I think it was trying to remember now, it's so difficult to remember. I think it was 129, something like that. I think it's a very fair price. So the rest of my day is going to be doing some more video editing. I've already got two videos exporting at the moment. Then I've also got to do a voiceover. I'm testing a piece of equipment that forms part of a video and I need to do the screen flow part, or the screen capture part of that particular video. And then I'm gonna be putting together some of my sort of thoughts about the LG G3. Now I'm probably not gonna record the video today because I wanna spend one more weekend with this before I put my video together, uh, but I've been very pleased, extremely pleased with it, especially the performance, the screen, and the camera. The camera on this is brilliant. I love the laser focus. I think I showed you that in one of my previous videos, but it's got an extra little sort of laser part on the back that it uses for focusing. And for both photography and video capture, it works extremely well. I've been so impressed. 
So as I say, I'll be probably recording this video probably Monday or Tuesday of next week, and then I'll get it up on the channel for you as soon as I can. So I'm gonna say goodbye for now. Have a fantastic weekend. Please do leave me some comments. Hit that like button or the dislike button and let me know why you're raising the video in that particular way. Please do subscribe and I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you very much for watching my video. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, there are two places you can find the subscribe button. On the main channel page, it's just up here in the top right hand corner. If you're on a video watch page, then you'll find it just underneath the video you've been watching. Click on the subscribe button and that means that you are now subscribed to the Geekanoids channel. But there is one more step you must take. Click on the little cog icon next to the subscribed button, put a tick in the send me updates box and click save. Job done. Thank you very much for watching again. I'll see you next time.